Well, we've just been told that there is a change. And this is a setback for Manchester United even before a ball has been kicked because Anthony Martial is out. We're told he has a hamstring injury, so that must have occurred during the warm-up. And it means that Marcus Rashford is actually now going to start instead of Martial. So if ever there was a situation that is uh, appearing to go uh, against Louis van Gaal, then that certainly doesn't bode well because uh, Marcus Rashford is going to, uh, to come in and replace him. That is um, a, a late change and that's a setback, Kevin. Yeah, massive setback. He has to be. I mean, we've just been talk, just talking to Ellie there saying about the difference tonight could be Anthony Martial, you know, because they're, they're relying on him for his experience. He has his 10 goals this season in, and he has looked a threat when I've seen him playing through the middle of late as well. So it's, I don't, I, I mean, again, United are going to be even weaker tonight. No, weaker certainly from uh, from his point of view. They are struggling for um, for it with injuries at the moment as well. You said before, is it 14, 15 injuries? That's obviously increasing now. And it is an experienced side that they've got out here tonight. They've got an unfamiliar back four in place. Midfield players around them, they're going to be heavily reliant on Snydlin, Herrera, Lingard, Mata, Memphis. These are the players tonight. That midfield five or so, that's going to be where the game, I feel, from United's point of view, will be won or lost. Well, he's an 18-year-old. He's come up through the youth system. He's Manchester-born. He has been on the bench a few times, but Marcus Rashford thrown in at the deep end in a game that is significant not only for Manchester United, but also for the future, you would think, of uh, manager Louis van Gaal. Because, as he said himself in his programme notes, it's imperative that Manchester United march on in this competition. Oh, and, and again, in something we've, we've already been discussing as well about a lot of these youngsters that are all in tonight as well, have they played in, in an intense Old Trafford environment when you've got to win a European game, a huge European game? And, and essentially, this is a big game for United, a huge game for them, because, like, you know, they've obviously been, been slack in the Premier League, they are struggling for a top-four position. This is their only way into the Champions League, I feel, anyway, from United's point of view. So this is a huge game for them. They've got another injury, and it's a big injury, and they have to rely on now another youngster, Marcus uh, Rashford, coming in tonight. We don't know a lot about him, and it's a big chance for all these youngsters, I suppose, that's within this side to shine this evening. Well, that has uh, certainly made things interesting as they line up for their team photo. So Manchester United now have Romero in goal, Varela, Carrick, Blint and Riley, Mata and Schneidlin, Lingard, Herrera and Depay and Marcus Rashford. He's been an unused substitute on two occasions this season, but uh, the 18-year-old making his Manchester United debut in their red shirts, white shorts and, uh, and white socks against a, a Michelin side that are all in black. They've made two changes from the first leg, Arena for Persic up front and Paulson coming in for Cadlet. Anderson is in goal. Romer, Bodorov, Hansen and Novak across the back. Sparv, who was at the Southampton Academy, is the holding midfielder. Hassan and Olsen. He was at the Arsenal Academy, Christopher Olsen. Jakob Paulson, very experienced. Sisto and Urena. But just look through that starting 11 and you've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got seven internationals. Yes which is a point that these players will not be phased. No, not at all. I mean, again, you know, Carrick can blend the playing out position, but they do have quality. I, I think they'll, they'll be heavily reliant on that, that midfield five I spoke about there. Snidlin and, and, and Herrera just sitting in. One matter in front of him. He'll be the, the, the real link player. He'll be the one that'll be, be the creative spot within the side. And, of course, you've got Memphis and Jesse Lingard. And Jesse Lingard is in form of late himself. Five, uh, Sorry, three goals in his last five games himself. So he's in form as well. So there's enough experience, as you say, within this side. But the one thing, again, I mean, you've got Joe Riley making his own, his, uh, his home debut tonight. Uh, Rashford making his home debut tonight. Ferreira, the, the uh, right-back for United. He's only had four starts this season before tonight. So there is inexperience within that experience core to the United side, though. Well, Manchester United trailing from the first leg by two goals to one. We'll keep you up to date with Tottenham, who are at home to Fiorentina. We're underway. Manchester United defending the Stretford end. So they're playing from left to right. Carrick at the back, hoists that ball high. Liverpool already through, beating Augsburg by a goal to nil. So they're into the draw. It's made around 
midday tomorrow. You'll be able to hear that on uh, on Five Live with news of that uh, that draw. The question is, will Manchester United and Tottenham join them in the next stage of this competition? Carrick at the back, plays it forward, looking towards uh, Rashford, who's, what, about 5 foot 10? Looks quite sprightly, little touch, though. Beaten to it in the, uh, in the challenge at the back by Hansen. And then headed forward by Michelin. Carrick there, who has experience, of course, of playing at the back for Manchester United in the past. And Carrick will see this ball back. Running towards him is uh, Urena. And that's cleared by Sergio Romero. But it's very important for Manchester United to be patient too. Yes, it is. I mean, maybe looking at Marcus Rashford as well. Uh, Ian, it's, it, it's you know he's coming in tonight. He's not had too much time to think, has he? The the the, the change has had to be made very late on. Obviously, Anthony Marshall goes off. So it, it's almost go on now and just go and enjoy it. I'm sure that's what's been said by the experienced players uh, or ex-players like Ryan Giggs in the bench. That's what Louis Van Gaal will be saying. Go out and enjoy it tonight as well. But there is a need for that, though. In there is, there's a lot of um, again the experience that's within the side. Be patient. They, they will keep the ball. They'll have long spells in this match where they're going to be in possession. But just uh, even against uh, Shrewsbury the other night, I, w I was it was positive the way that they kept the ball. Yet they were still creative and expansive when they were going for, particularly in the final third. I saw positive signs, and I think this sort of game tonight, albeit they are of a better quality, I think there'll be a lot of chances for United to be a little bit more expansive and, and creative in that final third. Carrick put under pressure once again by Marco Urena and uh, he actually asks for a little bit of uh, help as well. It was uh, Christopher Olsen who was uh, helping press Manchester United's uh, back line. Manchester United with a throw over on that far side. Christopher Olsen, 20 years of age, just the one appearance he made for uh, Arsenal against West Bromwich Albion in a League Cup tie. Uh, before he made a, a permanent switch after a lone spell at Michelin. And uh, the ball is played forward by the captain, Jakob Poulsen, a very experienced Danish international. And now it's on this near side with Varela. And the ball from Lingard is played behind Varela and out of play for a throw. But a draw's good enough for the day. Yes, it is. You can see the way that they line up as well, Dano. You see Tim Sparv, the number three for... Um, for Michelin, he's just sitting in front of the back four, so it's almost like a 4-1, 4-1 system that they're playing this evening. They've got real pace out wide with Sisto on the on the left hand side for them, and uh, it's it's Hassan on the right hand side for them. They're the pace he plays, they're the creative players. So I think when when they do break, they've got to really say they'll be reliant on Spar to break up the attacks, but can they free those wide men up quickly? And then if you say Paulson, he's playing like a number ten at the moment. He's just sat in in behind uh, Urena up front, and this, these are the players you would think that's going to be creative for them. Yeah. And as that ball went forward, it was uh, Sisto who was trying to get on the end of it. The ball has been thrown out underarm by Romero. And Varela will come forward. He's over the halfway line. Lingard then plays the ball back. Here is Herrera just over the halfway line. Lingard has ventured into a central position. Sparv was with him. And the ball is played out towards that far side. Curled out by Schneidlin. And now Depay, who cuts inside as he often likes to do. And he continues to come in field. Depay's right-footed shot headed away by Michelin. Positive though from, from Memphis. We saw him do that the other night against Shrewsbury with little or no effect really when he kept on drifting in from the right hand side. His shooting was off that night, but that was on target. Actually, Tim Sparvo just said he sat in front of the back four tonight. He was the one sat in almost as three centre halves though. He headed it away. So positive from Memphis. Manchester United back in possession. Five live here at Old Trafford. Nil nil. Up towards Lingard. And that will be dealt with by. Philip Novak, who is a Czech Republic international playing at, uh, at left back. Strong defence, and it'll be a throw to Michelin. Four and a half minutes played. You'll have to laugh, you know how tight it is here in our commentary position. And as that late change was made about Martial injured a hand in, 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 in the warm up. No, as I went to, to make the amendments to my notes, Olsen goes on a run. Blind will see the ball back towards Romero. I've dropped the stopwatch, <laughs> and uh, there's no chance of that being retrieved until the end of the game. So producer Gary Flintoff off, went off in search of a spare one. As our referee, who is uh, Istvan Vad from Hungary, gives a free kick to Manchester United, taken quickly. Varela is pushed out wide on this near side. 
and Herrera then back with uh, with Carrick. Old Trafford far from full, but the Manchester United supporters, Louis van Gaal made a note in his programme notes, said, you, you know, we might need you tonight in order to try and create the atmosphere. He admits they've had the ups and downs at Old Trafford this season. Quick free kick, mattered to Herrera, chipped out towards Varela. Been a lot of downs, actually, when you consider, particularly in the first half of games, as Herrera looking towards Rashford, the debutante. And Sisto back helping out, and Novak will win a throw for, for Michelin on this near side there left as they play from right to left on Five Live. This is the sixth successive day of, uh, of live football on Five Live, and if you look at the action coming up over the next few days, whether it be rugby union, football, or indeed championship boxing on Friday night that we've got for you at 10 o'clock on Saturday night, and the live sport continues to come thick and fast on Five Live Radio. Five live as uh, Sisto on this near side, the left Lingard is back, goal side turns and plays the ball back. Sisto then will play it forward, they've worked it nicely. Olsen coming over the halfway line. Sisto's continued his run midway through the Manchester United half on this near side. Pioni Sisto waits, Olsen in field along the ground. Spav never played for Southampton, but he scored against them in the earlier in the competition. It was a crucial goal in a 1-1 draw played in the same academy side as Lalana, Walcott and Gareth Bale got to the youth final in fact against Ipswich um, was it 11 years ago 2005 as the ball is chipped away by Manchester United and then played inside and now maybe they can break and there's a pass on towards Lingard and it's a, a cross field diagonal ball that will pick out Lingard and now all of a sudden Novak is back pedalling Lingard, though, passes the ball back. Schneidlin plays it forward. Here is Depay for Manchester United. Depay goes past his man, looks up into the penalty area, wins the corner. Positive from United. Excellent ball played from left to right initially from Ander Herrera. Didn't quite get it as he would like. He wanted to try and go on behind the back four, uh, or Midland's back four with Jesse Lingard making a good bit of ground up. But Lingard got a few moans and groans with a negative backward pass, but he didn't really have too many options, Lingard. He went back to... Snydlin, who freed up Memphis. Memphis started the game very well, a couple of telling runs at the moment. So again, it's something we're going to be reliant on Memphis to be creative tonight. Corner taken short, and now it's worked in. Headed away by Paulson, picked up by Herrera, clips the ball back into the area, headed out by Spav, back where the ball had come from. It's a Manchester United throw. Herrera wants this quickly from the ball girl, as it is. Just in front of us here, Manchester United playing from left to right. They've taken that throw. Varela, chested into the path of Herrera, plays it short. Lingard with his back to goal, back out towards Herrera. Still very tight and congested. And Lingard on the right-hand side, and Herrera is closed down, and that was off uh, Jakob Poulsen, this 32-year-old midfielder. Played at the World Cup in 2010, the Euros two years later, Danish international. But Michelin defending, 0-0, five lives. Still no goals at White Hart Lane either as uh, Varela, right-hand side, plays it back, Herrera with the cross, Depay is up, beaten to it in the air by Hansen. That loose ball will be picked up by the 49 of Joe Riley. it's a curling ball into the penalty area, and Rashford was there, and it's volleyed away, and out for a throw to Manchester United. Nil-nil, Kevin Kilbane. Well, it's positive from United. The one thing I, I saw Monday night, again, the same from Daley Blind, stepping in, playing forward passes, so often when I've seen United, when Morgan Snydling's played, when he's been playing in midfield, it's, I think it's quite negative with his passing. I think he goes backwards and sideways. Tonight, he is on the front foot passing forwards. Schneidlin runs into the penalty area. Shot comes in from Rashford. Headed away, Sisto back helping out. Been a positive start, though, with the uh, opening nine minutes played. Still no goals on five live, and now the ball is played long. Carrick, though, at the heart of that defence, will head it away, but Michelin have it back. And Poulsen, with his years of experience, plays the ball out towards that far side. Roma joins the attack, then plays it forward. And now an opportunity maybe to run at the Manchester United attack through Arena. But that has been cleared by Blint, brought down off the chest by Sparv. Trying to get away from Mata. And rolled along the ground towards Novak, the left-back. Forward and then back with Novak once again. And then Sparv, who's tall and lean as that defensive midfielder. Trying to be a calming influence, the ball is played forward. And that's offside from uh, Marco Urena, one of the two changes that uh, Jess Thorup actually made from the first leg. Kevin? Yeah, just going back to maybe the point of forward pass, so often playing against United, 
over the years here. We used to play against him. It was that forward pass that used to kill you at times. And yeah. I mentioned there Snidlin. Snidlin, when I've seen him over the last couple of the last maybe six, seven months, whatever, since he's come into Old Trafford, just feel as though he's playing within himself. I've liked Snidlin when he played. We used to play at Southampton. I feel as though he used to break up play, go forward. Already in this match, he's made a few forward runs, a few forward passes. That's what you expect, I think, from a, a player that's got to dic dictate uh, play from United's point of view when they're playing in the, as a holding midfielder. Riley, well forward. Joe Riley, who made his debut at, uh, at Shrewsbury in the uh, in the FA Cup. He's uh, 19 years of age, a midfielder converted to a, to a left back and looking to get forward at every opportunity. He's got a throw which he's taken over on that far side. And Rashford, Marcus Rashford, an 18-year-old striker coming in for his full debut, his first appearance in that famous red shirt of Manchester United after Martial went down with a hamstring injury on what is a cold night here at Old Trafford. Yeah, a couple of good touches owing from him as well. You know, the get United players are getting him into the game. He's been comfortable in possession, hasn't given anything away at the moment. He's just he's just basically playing himself into the game, which is what you would expect from him, but it's a, a positive start from his point of view. Just the one goal will do for Manchester United. You know, it's not like the situation that they faced themselves yeah. in against Olympiakos um, under David Moyes when they lost the first leg by two goals to nil and came back to win here 3-2. We've seen many a dramatic European night, not just for Manchester United, but Olympiacos, and you think back to that, it was a group stage game there, wasn't it, for uh, for Liverpool, but it's not that, you know, the, the size of the task isn't huge that's facing these players, is what I'm trying to say. As now, Varela coming forward, right corner of the penalty area. A couple of ricochets in that penalty area. Olsen tried to volley the ball away, struck the body of Lingard, and Michelin now will clear, left-footed, downfield. Michael Carrick judges the bounce of the ball and then sees it back left-footed all the way towards uh, Romero. They had hoped that David De Gea might be fit for this game, but it's a third successive start for the Argentinian. And now here is Schneidlin. It goes long, diagonal ball to Varela, well read by the left back, intercepted with the chest, then overran it towards Herrera. Herrera picks it up, looking towards Rashford. Sliding into the challenge, though, was Nikolai Bodorov. Rashford looks to go on the outside of the on-loan Fulham defender, and it will be a goal kick. This is Nikolai Bodorov, who's a Bulgarian international. He actually has made just short of 50 appearances for, uh, for Fulham. He started in three of the first four games in the Championship, and then completely dropped out of uh, contention at Craven Cottage and has since joined the Danes on loan. But he's 29 years of age, so he's not good no. enough to be in a championship side that is struggling. Yeah, that's it. So, well, again, it puts things into perspective. Maybe as well, you know, Fulham are going a different way as well. You know, might want him to, to play a different sort of a style of play, be open, expansive. Bodoroff doesn't have the pace, and we've seen even uh, immediately in this game, um, Rashford, as soon as he gets it out of his feet, he wants to go beyond him, and he saw he just overran that there, but you can see that he has the pace over Bodorov, and that could be Rashford's way in. He could be pulling onto the, the left-hand uh, side centre-half and try to play in him and expose him, if he can, for his lack of pace. Hansen in the centre circle. Chips the ball. Well, good covering by uh, Varela, the right-back. He was tucked in. It was a measured header back to Romero, and that was why you had the ripple of applause. Very quickly, though, Sisto came across this left-hand side of midfield and curbed the run of Varela and Manchester United were forced to go back. We've been playing for 14 minutes. It's goalless here at Old Trafford. Let's get the latest from White Hart Lane with Alistair Bruce Ball. Same here, goalless on the night. Tottenham nil, Fiorentina nil, 1-1 on aggregate. Tottenham with the away goal. Positive signs for Tottenham here early on. I think they should have had a penalty very early on for a handball by Marcus Alonso. Eric Dyer has also gone close with a header. Tottenham nil, Fiorentina nil, 1-1 overall. So 1-1 overall. And Tottenham have the benefit of that uh, away goal. Liverpool earlier beat Augsburg by uh, a goal to nil. That was what we were just talking about there, I mean, when they do get back into shape. Michelin get themselves organised. Sloppy ball from Michael Carrick, playing it across the pitch. Picked up on from, uh, from Hassan, who has the pace. You can see how immediately striding away from um, Morgan Snyder, and he didn't have the pace to stay with him. So United have got to be careful when they are in comfortable possession. Matter coming forward for the red of Manchester United, playing from left to right, you're listening to Five Live, 15 minutes played, Lingard right-hand side, they've doubled up on Lingard, he goes down towards the byline, checks back, rolls it towards Varela, the right-back, infield to Herrera, Herrera then goes square, midway through the Michelin half, it's Schneidlin, 
And now with uh, with Riley, who then backpedals to provide width over on that far side. The whistles are from the Danish supporters. Riley high up the pitch to Depay. To Matter in the penalty area with the ball along the ground. Matter then comes out of the penalty area with the ball at his feet and feeds it back out towards Riley. The cross comes in. He was looking for the volley of Matter. It was well read by Sparv to take it away and out for a throw. It's good, good movement actually from Rashford as well. He's recognising that they're playing a very, very deep line. He's played between the two centre halves himself. He can actually do that. He can actually just occupy the two centre halves and try and free up one matter. Here is Rashford. Low shot. The keepers turn it behind. Well, he collected that ball. He was mobile. It was a good shot. It was firm. It was true. It was low. And Anderson down to his right, turned it behind for a corner. Yeah, it comes from the, from the throw and sloppy from Michelin. But you say Rashford just finds himself a little bit of space, skips away from Tim Spahn and just. And as the corner then was worked in, it actually came off Hansen, I think. It was Kian Hansen, an outstretched right knee, diverted the ball behind for another corner. Again, they've taken it short towards Depay. Left-hand side goes for goal and into the midriff of the goalkeeper. Yeah, just going back to the point, excellent from Rashford, getting away from, from Spav, got himself onto his right foot, took the strike on, decent save from Anderson, but excellent by the youngster. Well, I would think as well that the start that he's made, Joe Riley's got forward at left back. These teenagers, uh, very inexperienced, will only grow in confidence with the start that they've made, I would imagine. They've got a supportive crowd here at Old Trafford. 17 minutes played, but it's still nil-nil. Hull 6, Castleford 12 is a, a latest in the, uh, in the Super League. Commentary continues on five live sports extra. We've got the, uh, the Rugby Union, the Six Nations tomorrow. Wales against France, that's at 8 o'clock. England, Ireland follows a double bill of football in the Premier League. West Ham, Sunderland at 12.45 and Leicester against Norwich from 3 o'clock on 5 Live on Saturday afternoon. Varela, right-hand side. Varela to Herrera. Right-footed ball into the penalty area. It was the right-back this time who was tucked in. Romer to head the ball away. Compact defensive back line from uh, Michelin. Basel 1. San Etienne nil, so they've levelled it up from uh, their 3-2 defeats in France and Napoli have uh, taken the lead against Villarreal, so Napoli won, Villarreal, Villarreal nil, and that means it's 1-1 on aggregate. I noticed earlier you pointed out that uh, Gary Neville's Valencia, mm. after a handsome 6-0 win in the first leg, won the, uh, the second leg against Rapid Vienna by four goals to nil. Well, they've had a good turnaround, haven't they? Excellent in the last few. He's up, he's up four wins on the bounce now. Ian, is it? I think, you know, they've had a good run at it. Would have expected to go through tonight after winning that first leg 6 nil. but positive signs for Gary Neville. 18 minutes played. No goals at Old Trafford in our commentary game on 5 Live and equally at White Hart Lane. It's nil nil between Tottenham and Fiorentina. Uh, the draw will be made at midday tomorrow. We'll have details of that on uh, on Five Live. There is no seeding. There is no country restriction. So bearing in mind that uh, Liverpool have gone through, if Tottenham and Manchester United were to join them, you could have the possibility of a of an all English tie, which would be uh, very interesting. 19 minutes played though, and the Danes still are ahead in the tie after that 2-1 victory in uh, in Denmark last week. A side that was only founded 19 years ago. And of course has been well covered. Matthew Benham is the majority shareholder. The, uh, the Brentford owner. Ball chipped into the penalty area. Strikes the back of the head of Rashford. It's a floated ball in by Varela. And Sisto will take this high on the chest. Keeps the ball in play. Challenge comes in from Mata. Sisto's done well under pressure but now he's lost it. Here is Lingard. Back to Mata. Bypassed him. Paulson into the challenge, Herrera, Manchester United very much on the front foot, still nil-nil. Out towards the pie over on that far side, skips away from one challenge, dances past another, comes past another player, cuts in field, passes the ball into the penalty area, and then the clearance comes from the bodder off with the face mask, Aka Zorro. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah he's, uh, he's, he's getting in the way at the moment, bodder off, isn't he? Positive again though from Memphis, skipping by a couple of players, you say they didn't really have any options though when he comes inside. Lingard, the cross took a deflection off the head of Philip Novak, the left back, and into the arms of Mikel Anderson, this 28-year-old goalkeeper, formerly of, uh, of Reading. Five appearances in the uh, in the championship, eight seasons in total he had though. 
He was loaned out to clubs such as Bristol Rovers and uh, and Portsmouth. Signed a two-year deal in the uh, in the summer. Mikel Anderson, as Manchester United are seeing a lot of the possession, and Michelin at the moment are just having to try and soak up that uh, that pressure and looking to try and press as well when that ball is passed forward from the defence towards Schneiderlin. I noticed that Olsen sporting the uh, the Alice band was quick and they're taking it in turns actually to go on Schneidlin who has forced the drop just inside his own half to collect that ball so they're well organized yeah very well organized there's something I spoke about before about the two wide men that they break you can see when there's a chance to win the ball the two wide men immediately step onto the front foot expecting or anticipating that as soon as Paulson perhaps in a central he wins it he has got to then free up free up one of the wide men and it's just it's, it, you look at it on the face it looks like a, a negative ploy but there's a there's also a different sort of side of it that they can break from this shape because of the pace that they've got out wide Barella pushed up on this near side the right Sisto again was standing in front of him it came off his right knee out of play for a throw so uh, the problems that he might find though Ian it's just like you say Sisto and, and Hansen the two wide men they're doing that much work defensively and they're that deep at times they've got to cover a lot of ground to get anywhere near United's final third so that is where they have to perhaps be a little bit clever and perhaps as the game goes on they might be able to come a bit braver Ooh, Carrick's first touch went away from him almost played in Poulsen he looks to the heavens Manchester United come forward and Novak well Novak attempted clearance was charged down by Lingard and it was a firm block and fortuitously in favour of Manchester United it went goalwards and then they were unfortunate to see it actually strike the side netting well he, he had so much time there Novak as well as the, as the ball came another little touch from from Rothley because it come through to me he had so much time dwelt on the ball and as you say then he had so much space as well it was actually uh, Sisto was on either side and he could have played him quite easily and Herrera just stepped into the into that path or that line of vision so he couldn't actually hit the pass, uh, the pass cleanly and Lingard then with the block poor though from Novak that caused the goalkeeper all in purple away to our right hand side to panic Manchester United nil Michelin nil no goals at White Hart Lane Europa League action live on five live as Lingard plays it short and forward gets it back from Herrera Schneidlin's an option but it comes back out towards this near side the right touch line Varela though because of Sisto this 21 year old midfielder born in Uganda to Sudanese parents but uh, moved to Denmark at the age of, uh, of two months and in fact now is a, a Danish international with two caps to his name he's certainly doing his defensive shift on this near side Porto nil, Borussia Dortmund won so Borussia Dortmund now lead 2-0 on aggregate 3-0 in fact on aggregate they're 1-0 up on the night as Manchester United looking to bring themselves level in the tie still goalless here Rashford gets the ball back plays it to Mata and then it was a a ball that was quickly taken away off the toes by Andre Romer and it's gone behind forcefully for a corner kick to Manchester United just a bit of a heavy pass wasn't it from Rashford into Mata just a uh, Mata couldn't quite get hold of it but Rashford started well you can be really pleased positive signs for him corner again is rolled towards Depay how many times they've had what three four maybe yes. even five corners on that far side every time they've taken it short worked it towards Depay who's then curled the cross in rather than going direct from the corner yeah, well that was something that Mitchelland in the week as well Do you remember the, the, the goal that they scored against Shrewsbury said that they learnt that goal from Mitchelland perhaps they might be maybe looking at their set plays as well something you, you, when you know about Mitchelland when you learn about them they have a set piece um, uh, coach they have actually a kicking coach they have actually a throwing coach as well believe it or not so they have so many different elements to the to the game at Mitchell they cover every base and United are trying to learn from what perhaps Mitchell were doing to to them last week over there in Denmark free kick has just been given in favor of the Danish side however there has been a goal at White Hart Lane Alistair Bruce Ball good news for Tottenham fans Tottenham lead on the night they lead on aggregate 1-0 here at White Hart Lane this evening goal scored by Ryan Mason it was a brave first time pass from Deli Alley who got clattered as he made it but it meant Mason got in on the left hand side and then it was a very cool finish from the young man across the keeper into the far corner Tottenham won Fiorentina nil on the night and it's 2 under Spurs on aggregate Ryan Mason who's just recently returned to the uh, the Tottenham lineup after injury and a timely reminder with uh, Roy Hodgson 
uh, in the next what, couple of weeks, set to announce his England squad for the forthcoming friendlies against Germany in Berlin and then England at home to Holland. This is the Europa League. Manchester United nil, Michelin nil. And Carrick playing at the centre of defence for Manchester United tonight. Uh, no smalling with a shoulder injury. And just in case that uh, you missed it, that injury list compounded by the news that Martial picked up a hamstring injury in the warm-up. That was a slice clearance at the back by Hansen. But they've uh, overcome that uh, mishap. And now it's with the fair-haired Novak to play the ball long. Headed on by Poulsen, Jakob Poulsen. And here is Varela, but under pressure from Sisto, he's running out of play for a throw to Michelin. This will be better for Michelin, just so they can get a few more bodies forward. Novak's in a, a good position, he's got, he's got time on his hands, he can pick a pass out, but there's only the front man, Urena, who he can hit. Paulson tried to get in support, and it's difficult really, for, as I said before, for Michelin to get bodies forward because they are so deep. The pace is from out wide, but they just can't get forward at the moment, and that's got to be the difficulty from their point of view. They're almost just trying to stay in the game at present. Sisto, Blint helps out uh, Varela, still in play, right down by the corner flag in the tunnel area. For those of you who've uh, been to uh, Old Trafford in that uh, far left-hand corner towards the, uh, the Stretford end, they've eventually cleared over Sparv and Mata, picked up then by Bodorov. And now here is uh, Hassan inside. Michelin now to Sisto, able to turn, nice footwork, creates the opportunity and scores! That's for the cat amongst the pigeons at Old Trafford. It was a tidy goal, excellent footwork, and he wasn't phased. Right-footed, bottom left-hand corner, they have the away goal. And now Manchester United have problems, because Michelin lead by a goal to nil. Well, it is massive problems, as you say there, Ian. Initially, Hassan picks up the ball, goes inside to Arena. Arena then picks up Sisto, who skipped away from Carrick who almost dived at the ball he went down far too early he didn't stand up Carrick I think he actually made it easy for Sisto who then had the presence of mind then to place it beyond oh, Romero in goal simple goal though really really easy goal from Mixon's point of view but credit Sisto once he skips away initially it was blind Michael Carrick went to ground far too easily and it was a really good finish at the end of it into the far corner beyond Romero excellent from Mitchelland he scored the equaliser in the first leg. But as he celebrated, he pointed to the name and number on the back of his shirt. If Manchester United, who now need to score at least two, then the number may or the numbers may well be up as far as Louis van Gaal is concerned. Because Manchester United now, we said before, patience very much the key word. They don't need to panic as Romero's clearance is charged down by a hard-working Urena and he's kept the ball in play over on that far side. But Manchester United now have got to step it up. Now all of a sudden there is that need for urgency here at Old Trafford and the players have got to take on that responsibility. Yeah, spot on, and that's what they need to do now. You say take on that responsibility, particularly the likes of Herrera and Mata as well. They've got to be the players, it's even Snydlin as well. Try and dictate the ball, pass forward quicker. But all of a sudden, there's that spark to Michelin's side, isn't there? Of course, the goals give them a little bit of hope. Sloppy from Michael Carrick again with the back pass. It was under hit. Didn't really give Romero much chance. Romero then, obviously, had his kick blocked. But a real spark now to Michelin's play. But didn't he take it well? Lingard with the cross. That'll be dealt with by Bodorov. Bodorov, though, dispossessed. Schneidlin. It's not full, Old Trafford. But the Manchester United supporters will soon start to turn because Manchester United are facing an exit in the Europa League in the last 32. I would imagine the Liverpool supporters listening to Five Live knowing that their place is already assured will be revelling in the misfortune at their rivals. Liverpool won Augsburg nil a result. Tottenham are heading through. They lead Fiorentina by a goal to nil. But much work to do for Manchester United who've won a corner. Well, that's Rashford out wide actually there, the centre forward, he's going out to try to get in, into the game, try and get on the ball. He's done quite well when he's just played in the central area, he doesn't need to be going out wide crossing himself. No variation again from the corner, it's played to Depay. Blint with a cross from the far side, headed away by Roma. And the goal scorer Sisto will clear, and Varela is the last line of defence, that 
solitary red shirt inside the United half. Manchester United playing from left to right. Herrera, the Michelin supporters who haven't filled that away allocation but have made the journey to be ready to celebrate one of the greatest achievements in their short history as a football club. Varela with the cross, headed away, comes out to Schneidlin rather than shoot. He passes the ball and then Depay shoots and it was gathered in by the goalkeeper. Michelin still lead 1-0. Yeah, he hit it well enough. Again, Schneidlin stepping in forward, pass positive from Schneidlin. Memphis hits it first time, struck it too well actually, struck it well enough. Just didn't find any accuracy, it was a slight deflection, actually take the pace out the strike as well. And it was comfortable for the goalkeeper, Mikel Anderson. Olympiakos 1, Anderlecht 0. So they're now 1-1 one, one on aggregate. As they're coming forward once again, uh, Michelin, this time it was with Hassan. Challenge came in, Lingard now has a little bit of space to run into. Rashford's ahead of him. Matters venturing forward, Rashford now takes it over. Back heels the ball towards Lingard. Varela, a uh, Schneiderlin rather will pass the ball towards Varela. They're quick though to get those black shirts behind the ball. Varela will try and commit a few players. Passes it to Mata. Mata out wide. Depay over on that left hand side. Depay into the penalty area and it's an on goal. It's come off Bodorov's outstretched right leg. Manchester United have the equaliser. There is still hope and there's still plenty of time for Manchester United. They're level on the night 1 1. Well, it's better from Memphis again. He's been a bit of a spark for United. He's the one that's looked to go beyond players, beat his man in the final third, take a chance. Quite easy for him, actually, to get beyond Hanson once the ball does come into him. Gets to the byline. And when he gets to the byline as well, he's done this a few times, dragging it with his right foot, getting beyond Hanson. But he's looking for the pullback. He's looking to try and put it across the six-yard box. Botteroff doesn't quite get his body shape right, doesn't get into position on time. Deflects it beyond Anderson. But it was excellent from Memphis. The good penetrating run by Depay and Manchester United after the setback responding in a matter of five minutes. Manchester United won, Michelin won. I was just looking to the bench uh, down there as well, Low Ian, sorry. The, the coach from Michelin, he's screaming at his team to try to, you know, come up five or ten yards trying to get them to come up, even his midfield, tried to engage United a little bit more, almost when they've scored, they just sat back, because even when United were on the halfway line, the back four were almost on the 18-yard box, and it was such a, 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 a low default, certainly a, a defensive line that was sitting very, very deep, and it, it sorry, invited United to get on top of them, and that's what Memphis certainly did. Five Live and BBC Manchester with the commentary here at Old Trafford. Uh, Lingard has just taken a, a little blow. The referee from Hungary will have a word with uh, Philip Novak. Important, though, that Manchester United got an equaliser yeah. relatively quickly. Definitely. They didn't want the pressure mounting because, as I said, Mich Michelin's start to this game certainly would, would continue as they, uh, they, they certainly they started the match sitting deep. Difficult to play through, try to see it through, maybe to half-time, go through maybe 10 or 15 minute spells. And as I said, that wouldn't change as much, so they had to get that goal, just to try and relieve the pressure that would have mounted for the next 10 or 15 minutes. They've done that now, so there's no real urgency now to go on and get now that, that second goal. I'm sure it'll come if they continue the way that they've started this game, though, United. Well, it was a scare. Michelin, though, still have the advantage by three goals to two. Tottenham are leading Fiorentina 1-0 at White Hart Lane. Ryan Mason with that goal in North London. Liverpool safety through. Lingard. That was a, a foul. And just he's had a, a talking to the left back. No back. And so therefore he's shown a yellow card for pulling back Lingard. Well, Lim, Lingard's caught him three times now, dwelling on the ball. Novak. And in all honesty, to the left back, he doesn't really have too many options. He's actually trying to beat Lingard knock it one way and run round the other. He's got no options when he does when he does get into positions when he's stepping forward. Lingard's picked his pocket again, took the ball off him and he was away. Lingard was running right at Michelin's back four and hold over from Novak. Clear yellow card, really. The worry for Lingard, bearing in mind this injury crisis that Manchester United have, is that he's still grimacing. He's still feeling the effects. Um, it, it looks like the, um, the groin area that he's... Uh, yeah. He's feeling the effects of that injury. Yeah. I mean, he took a blow on the leg, didn't he, that it was on his knee when, when he, he was almost... United almost played with nine men against uh, Shrewsbury, but he doesn't look comfortable, no. Herrera with the cross, good ball in. 
Partially cleared, Depay tees himself up, Depay goes out wide on that far side, still inside the penalty area, quickly crowded out, works over the ball and it's turned behind for a corner by Novak. Well, Memphis has got Hansen on toast, hasn't he? Hansen doesn't know what to do, he's coming in onto his right side, he's going back onto his left foot. Corner taken quickly and short, Blind. They're trying to seize the initiative, Manchester United, 1-1 on the night, Varela hoists this ball in, drops... Look like it rolled down the arm of Schneidlin. It'll break with Hassan. Hassan then looking for Urena. The return ball, though, will be easily won back by Manchester United. You uh, you missed the obvious one, though, when he was he was feeling the effects of that groin injury. Bearing in mind Louis van Gaal's pre-match comments as Depay, who's certainly extremely lively on that far side, then overruns the ball. I just didn't think we could use that word, Ian. That's all it was. Are we allowed to use it now? Louis van Gaal said that he wants his players to be horny. Right. Well, fair enough, they're certainly hot at the moment because they're coming forward with Lingard, who, again, Novak has no intention, no intention of uh, letting him pass. Novak is treading a very, very fine line. I think he's got away with that, Novak. He makes the initial foul, which is something that Jesse Lingard's trying to say to the assistant referee on our near side. It was a foul on Lingard. Novak was beaten for pace on the outside. He's... But Got to say, though, as far as pre-match comments go, that was one of the more bizarre comments, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, I just thought in, uh, it was one matter that was sat beside him, wasn't he? Van Matter made the joke about it. He was the one that was saying that he actually says it in the dressing room quite regular to the team. Not too sure what I would think if a manager was saying that to me, Ian. That's never happened, then? Uh, well, obviously not, no. no. It's not me, um, <laughs> I won't say. <laughs> Manchester United won. Michelin of Denmark won. Ball played forward. Rashford, the debutante, is after it. He's taken his marker with him down towards the corner flag. Again, good mobility from the teenage striker. Yeah, he's doing well. You know, he started the game well, Marcus Rashford. He's causing problems. I just think at the moment he's just spending a little bit too, too much time out wide. I just think he can try and occupy the two centre halves, Hansen and Bodoroff. He can cause them problems with his pace. In comes the cross, cut out by Bodorov, and he did well that time. He had two players, Blint and Schneidlin, running behind him. Schneidlin in with the overhead kick, that drops wide, because Bodorov is effectively facing his own goal, running into the six-yard area. It's a hook clearance, because he knew he couldn't afford to miss it with the two players coming in behind no, him. Oh, and he's unlucky with it with the follow-up, actually, Schneidlin. I actually think the Bodorov could go and head that. I think he doesn't necessarily see the position that he's in. He's going too deep. Schneidlin's lurking, as you say, and... It's a last-ditch clearance from Bodoroff. I think he could just go and head it. Perhaps even Anderson could come and claim it. It's four yards out. He could maybe step into position, get a punch on it, or come and, uh, come and collect it comfortably. Just look a little bit nervous defensive at the moment, Michelin. Talking of things a little bit uh, off-kilter, so to speak, there is a programme tomorrow on Radio 4 at half-past four, and it's called The Art of Nothing. And it's about commentary when something's not necessarily happening. Uh, Jonathan Agnew appears in it, um, as do I. Uh, it's a 4.30 on, uh, on Radio 4. It's called The Art of Nothing. Yeah, Art of Nothing. On Radio 4 That's at what half you're past four tomorrow. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Built my career on it. Anyway, we've had two things to happen of interest tonight. Manchester United won, Mitchell and won. Sisto with the first goal for the Danes. And then a Bodoroff own goal. But Mitchell with... Uh, Depay, the goalkeeper had it covered, dives down to his right, Depay's shot fired wide. Michelin, though, are still leading by three goals to two. 1-1 one, one on the night, but Michelin still have the advantage, so Manchester United need to score at least one more, and then we have the possibility of, uh, of extra time. Tottenham, remember, are leading Fiorentina by a goal to nil. Liverpool are through. Uh, the final is in Basel on the 18th of May, and the draw takes place at midday tomorrow for games to be played on the 10th and 17th of March. I, I mean, I just saying before, though, the, the, the goal's been coming from the start from United's point of view. I haven't really tested Anderson enough, but that's by and large been down to how deep Michelin have been defending. And um, you, just, you just feel if, they can if they're going to continue like this, Michelin, and not provide any sort of a, a, attempts or even attacking threat going forward, United will score eventually. Olsen, tidy little player. Back with Sisto, it was a very good goal from Sisto, very composed, good footwork, nice tidy finish, Novak. The two wide men come in very narrow, didn't they, for the goalie, and it, that, that's what created the problems for United. 
they've stayed wide, they've been disciplined defensively, but as soon as he had that chance to attack, Cisco and, and uh, Hassan, left and right wing, they went very narrow and they supported Arena up front and that's where they got the joy from it as well and you say it was a brilliant finish from Cisco at the end. Mata, early ball, it's away from, uh, from Rashford and Kian Hansen, the defender, will help see it back towards the goalkeeper, Bodorov plays it forward, sort of look of, uh, of Modric from a distance, hasn't he, with his hairstyle, as uh, Christopher Olsen, this 20-year-old, former Arsenal Academy graduate, as uh, Sisto, forward of the centre circle and across towards Roma, who's got forward, the right back, but then when he does, he doesn't need to record in possession, but he's been dispossessed, and then Mata towards Depay, and Depay, who's really been a thorn in Michelin's side throughout, now into the penalty area, they quickly look to try and crowd him out, he's got to wait for some support inside that penalty area, he tries to thread it through, but at least he'll win a corner, but Depay, every time, give the ball to him, he's causing so many problems. So many problems, you say, every time, he's got, I actually think he could have been a bit more positive though, it was Tim Sparv, the holding midfielder actually had come out because Hansen had got forward from right back for Mitchell and I think he could have been a bit more positive in comes the cross and the header hits the post it was from Schneidlin eight yards out he was stationary so he's just tried to guide it with the neck muscles and it strikes the left hand post as we look the goalkeeper diving away to his right was beaten Manchester United come close Herrera taken out penalty surely yes it is it was Romare who brought him down and Manchester United now have a penalty to bring this tie level on aggregate. Yeah, it has been coming, hasn't it? I think it's actually Hansen in with the challenge. I think he was the one that made the challenge on Juan Mata. Juan Mata just bought it, didn't he? He just waited for Hansen to go to ground. Clear penalty, as you say. You picked up on it straight away and it was a clear penalty. Referee made the decision. It was actually come from another flick from Memphis as well. One matter. Look at the flashlights around Old Trafford. The Manchester United supporters are desperate to try and capture this moment as uh, one matter runs up now. And the goalkeeper has saved it. And Anderson is congratulated by his teammates. It was low to the left. The goalkeeper at full stretch turned it around. Didn't seem to have a great deal of pace on it. But it's been turned behind in Michelin. Are still leading in the tie. It remains 1-1 on the night. It's a corner which has been taken quickly. And what is becoming a dramatic night at Old Trafford. He hit it well enough as well, didn't he? But you've got to credit Anderson. Got himself down. Excellent save. Really was. It is with Olsen coming forward. And buoyed by that penalty save. They're now looking to strike at the other end. And that will just be a little bit more dent to the Manchester United confidence as Carrick not only brings the ball out of defence, he sprints over the halfway line. Under two minutes remaining. Depay, though, has certainly been the performer of the night for Manchester United. Riley joins the attack on that far side. Riley into the penalty area. Hassan makes the challenge. Rashford will help him out on that far side. Rashford tries with a back heel to Riley and Marks. In comes this curling ball, punched away by the goalkeeper, Anderson. And Varela will let it run out of play for a throw. Yeah, he's done well, as you say. Romero and Hansen, the, the, the centre-half and the right-back, they're getting really exposed badly from Memphis at the moment. Certainly most of United's attacking threats coming down United's left-hand side. And it's almost as if Joe Riley, the left-back, he's just got a... doesn't even need to get forward as well. All he needs to do is keep giving Memphis the ball and support from behind. That's what Memphis would want. And he's exposing Romer, definitely. Tottenham lead by a goal to nil against Fiorentina. It's 1-1 here on the night as Rashford goes for a curling shot just inside the penalty area. Right-footed, couldn't keep it down. It's high and it's wide and it's out for a goal kick. And we're inside the last 60 seconds of this first half. Manchester United won, Michelin won. But Manchester United missing that penalty through one matter. And let's go to White Hart Lane and Alistair Bruce Ball. All going to plan for Tottenham at the moment. One minute of added time at the end of the first half. They lead 1-0 through Ryan Mason's goal. One moment of danger for them. Ilicic curling a shot wide, just wide, of Hugo Lloris's far post. Tottenham leading 1-0 on the night, 2-1 on aggregate. And Tottenham looking to join Liverpool in the next stage of this competition. Manchester United will have a little bit of added on time. We're about to see how much time that will be. And in fact, it's just the additional 60 seconds. 
which we're now into on Five Live and BBC Radio Manchester here at Old Trafford. As Romero all in green away to our left-hand side, strikes it long, Novak. That would be worth running at Novak on a yellow card. Yeah. For, uh, for Michelin, but a lot of Manchester United have been down that far side the left, hasn't it? Molder well, are leading Sevilla fair. by a goal to nil, but Sevilla still have that first leg cushion of three goals. Well, Novak's been getting himself into trouble, hasn't he? Lingard hasn't necessarily had the opportunity to go running at him. He's had a couple of chances to do it, but he's just caused himself problems, Novak. He's delayed his pass going forward, and that's, again, something I say, they've not really got too many options when they do go forward, but sometimes he's, he might need to put his foot through it and just try to get his side back in shape. Rashford, round the back, drills it in low, into the side netting, goal kick, that might be the last bit of action in this first half, there's another United player down on that uh, far side, it's Depay, he's now sitting up, Schneiderlin will have a word with the Hungarian referee. Just seen that penalty again there in before, and it, uh, at first I thought he struck it well enough and it was a, a brilliant save for Madison, but didn't quite catch it the way he would like. Lacked power, didn't it? One, one matter, yeah, it did lack power, wasn't in the corner. Anderson, once he gets his right, he's always going to make the save, and he did. He went early, actually. Comfortable save for him. Well, that's the half-time whistle. Manchester United won. FC Michelin won. The Danes taking the lead through Sisto after 27 minutes. A bodder off own goal five minutes later. Brought United back level on the night. A chance to level the tie, though, squandered. Romare fouling Herrera in the penalty area. Mata having his penalty kick saved. Here are the thoughts of Kevin Kilban. Well, I think United have actually played quite well in the half. Going forward, Michelin have not really caused too many problems. The one chance that they had, they scored it. And then United continued wave after wave of attacks going forward. Got the equaliser. Memphis, who's been the real thorn in Michelin's side, he had a little bit of creativity out wide. The fullback Romero doesn't know how to deal with uh, Memphis at the moment. Get the goal back and, of course, missed a penalty. So I think, by and large, Louis van Gaal will be happy with his side but Michelin will continue to defend deep, make it difficult for United, United have to be a bit more expansive in the final third and be a bit more creative. Throughout the break, it's Manchester United 1, Michelin 1, but Michelin lead 3-2 on aggregate. Guys, let me read you this tweet from Sophie Gator using the hashtag BBC Football. She just says, shambles, 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 shambles. The thing is, Ellie, Fair assessment I, or not quite? No, I think United have been dominant. They've dominated it really in possession. But I think the realistic thing is when you come to watch United now, it's not how it was five or six years ago. You're not getting United creating 10 or 15 chances or certainly having six, seven chances on target at half. They've been a little bit different for, for how they're approaching games. This is how Louis van Gaal sees his side playing, dominating possession, being open, being expansive. That's the way that they've played today. It's... Um, I think they've, they've been comfortable, I think, throughout. They've, they've, they've dominated large parts of the match, the match, but they do look vulnerable defensively when, um, when Michelin get the ball and press quickly. Uh, Jordan on Twitter says, this is the most embarrassing season I have ever had as a United fan. I, I, you know, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to assess it, isn't it? Do you think that maybe, Ian, the standards have to be reordered? You know, it's... it's the, United fans, and I'm not going to say have been spoiled, but they have had high expectations for so many years. Well, they've had a lot of dominance in uh, in, in recent years. Um, that was before Sir Alex left. They've, they've not won a trophy since Sir Alex left, of course. And, you know, they had that trans transitional period. And uh, you, you could argue now that from a transitional period, they've actually gone backwards under under Louis van Gaal. It depends. I forgot the, the, the name of the lad who, who tweeted. That was depends, Jordan. Right, it depends how old he is. I mean, if he's, if he's under... If he's under sort of like 25, then, then he, he will not be used to this. But uh, older Manchester United supporters will, will remember the, uh, the 80s and how Manchester United have, uh, have struggled. I mean, I was trying to work out if, if they were to lose tonight, where this would rank in terms of an embarrassing exit from a European competition. And you're thinking of Roto Volograd in the first round of the UEFA yeah. competition. Um, you, I seem to the, 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 the recall they lost to Torpedo Moscow on one occasion as well. So, you know, it, it is a reality check for them at this, at this stage. You know, they, they are where they are. They're, they're not one of England's best sides at the moment. They're far from it. Well, it's not over yet. 3-2 uh, to Michelin at half-time, but they have got that away goal, of course. Let's speak to Tom and Julia. Uh, Julia, let me ask you the question that Ian's just posed. Where does this rank? Well... I mean, as they just uh, inferred, I mean, it, it's, it could be very embarrassing tonight. Um, you know, although Van Gaal keeps talking about the fact that we're in, still in 
three um, in the chances of having three trophies it's difficult to think that we would actually even contemplate that we could win any of those we, you know we're, we're off the lead in the Premier League um, we, we're not playing particularly well if you talk about our best side our best side is all the injured players at the moment mm. you know we're having to, to patch up um, a team and losing Martial tonight was another big blow we've got a massive game on Sunday against Arsenal and we're almost you know turning out the second team it's very difficult and very um, frustrating as a United fan to see that happening but let's I mean, look at Sorry, Sorry, Julia, to take on. the positives out, out of the game so far tonight, um, you know, we do look like we're playing with more confidence. We look like we want to win, which is we've not seen in the last few games, um, obviously the Shrewsbury game, but, um, you know, no, no um, offence to Shrewsbury, but that was obviously a, a lower league team. You know, um, we need to be put, playing with this confidence. We need to get this confidence back in the team. And I know that's going to be difficult when you're having to put... Um, new players in all the time yeah. because of all the injuries that we've got going through. I mean, Riley and Rashford, to me, are playing well tonight. They're doing really well for the team and Memphis has been our best player. Yeah, well, I was going to ask Tom that very same question. Uh, let's look at some positives. Marcus Rashford, 18 years old, making his debut, has looked pretty lively in this first half. Yeah, he has. He's been one of the better players, I think. I think that's probably one of the only positives so far of Van Gaal's reign is that he does look to give the youngsters a chance and that that must give them some confidence, and uh, it's, you know it's something to look forward to for United fans when hopefully he does move on. Uh, you've got youngsters that can come into the team that have, have played at a decent level, that have played in Europe, and have been given the chance to go and you know show what they can do. Well, listen, guys, going to get you to give me a one-word answer. Are they going to go through yes or no, Tom? Uh, yeah, I think so. Julia, yes. Good, excellent. You've got confidence. Uh, we'll talk to you <laughs> both. To well, you have, of course you have. Keep the faith. Yeah. We'll talk to you both at full time. Uh, let me tell you that Spurs are leading Fiorentina 1-0 at half time at White Hart Lane. So they would go through if it stays like that. And Liverpool beat Augsburg by the same scoreline 1-0 uh, in the 5 past 6 kickoff at Anfield. That was a James Milner penalty. Uh, more to come during half time. We'll bring you full second half commentary of Manchester United against Michelin. It's 1 1 at half time. United have missed a penalty though, and Michelin lead by, two, uh, by three goals to two. Uh, let's get the news though. Just before nine o'clock, here's Alison. On digital, online, smartphone and tablet. This is BBC Five Live. Good evening. An independent inquiry has concluded that serious failings at the BBC allowed Jimmy Savile to sexually abuse victims undetected over decades. The investigation identified 72 people abused at the BBC by Savile. One of his victims, who doesn't want to be named, has welcomed Dame Janet Smith's report, but thinks the document is wrong to say legal action couldn't have been taken against Savile based on the rumours while he was alive. If that's the case, then she can't state factually that nobody knew. It's got to be a possibility. And I think that's how she, sh she should have concluded it. If she can't put her head above the crowd and say, I believe people knew. I'm sad that she felt she couldn't. The report also highlights the abuse carried out by Stuart Hall. It says it found 21 people who were his victims. The owners of Alton Towers are to be prosecuted over a crash on the Smiler roller coaster last year. Five people were seriously injured when two cars collided on the ride. A senior European Union official says the EU has 10 days to reduce the number of migrants or risk the collapse of its border system. The EU Migration Commissioner Dimitris Avramopoulos told Interior Ministers meeting in Brussels that it was time for coordinated action, not unilateral border restrictions. Net migration to the UK, the difference between people arriving and leaving, has fallen. It now stands at 323,000 but remains well above the government's target. Our Home Affairs correspondent is Danny Shaw. It is EU migration that is really fueling this big rise in net migration. EU migration still slightly below uh, migration from non-EU countries, but it is catching up. 
A judge in France has approved plans to clear part of the migrant camp in Calais. The site known as the Jungle is home to thousands of people, many of whom are trying to get to Britain. And the NHS watchdog NICE is speeding up how it assesses new cancer drugs in England. It's part of an overhaul of the Cancer Drugs Fund, which pays for medicines which otherwise wouldn't be provided. Decisions on new drugs should now be made in 90 days. This is BBC Five Live on digital, online, smartphone and tablet. On the roads, three lanes are closed on the M25 clockwise after an accident between Junction 14 for Heathrow Terminal 5 and 15 for the M4. There's queuing traffic there. And a broken down crane is causing problems on the M5 southbound in the West Midlands. It's blocking one lane between the M6 and Junction 1 for West Bromwich. Alison Acton, Five Live Travel. This is Five Live Breakfast. Good morning, it's Five Live and it's six o'clock. We've seen the oil price fall huge amounts in the last 20 months or so. You've got free will, you know what you're doing. This deal between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Tremendous respect for the FA Cup. Because of an accident, one lane is currently blocked. And maximum temperature is getting up to about seven or eight degrees. We speak to people every morning about stuff here. (laughs) Find out what your radio is capable of. Five Live Breakfast, weekday mornings from six. We'll hear from Jurgen Klopp in just a moment. Liverpool through to the last 16 of the Europa League. And we're a day away from finding out who will replace Sepp Blatter as FIFA president. And there are two clear front runners in Sheikh Salman and Gianni Infantino. Both the English and Scottish football associations have plumped for Infantino. I asked Scottish FA Chief Executive Stuart Regan why Gianni is the man for the job. Well, first of all, there's five candidates. We studied their manifestos and we felt that the strongest candidate of all of them was Johnny Infantino. Uh, he put forward a number of areas of focus, one being reform, the second one being uh, what he called democracy and participation, and the third one around football development. And he's made a number of strong uh, suggestions about how he intends to reform FIFA. And in many ways, he's mirrored some of the initiatives that we ourselves have put in place in Scotland over the last five years, term limit for appointees to the council and, and to key committees and imp- in, uh, improve focus on transparency, a focus on governance and you know the strong kind of corporate code of governance that goes with that. Some people would think that his agenda should be first reform, second reform, third reform. He's got to do something or whoever wins has got to do something to reform FIFA, haven't they? Because the trust in it is at an all-time low. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. In fact, the current or the acting president of FIFA, um, Issa Hayatu, spoke to everyone this morning and he actually said the eyes of the world are on football right now and you know we need to make sure that we get this right. Johnny Infantino has come out and, and backed that point and said that you know we have to get the governance in FIFA improved, we have to put key measures in place and that's a fundamental part of his manifesto. And that was the SFA Chief Executive Stuart Regan. Let me speak to Jamie Fuller of the campaign group New FIFA Now. Hi Jamie. Hi there. Is Gianni Infantino the reform candidate or the best candidate to push through the really necessary reforms? Definitely not. What we're dealing with here is we're dealing with the equivalent of a house with rotten foundations and we're trying to give it a paint job. Uh, All of these chaps are completely wasting their time. Uh, And as for Mr Infantino, I mean, here's, here's a man that's campaigning on a manifesto which says... Vote for me and I will give every federation $5 million. Now, if that's not old FIFA, I don't know what is. Mm. So who would you have liked to have seen on the ballot? I'd like to have seen nobody on the ballot. I'd I'd like to see this organisation doing what it needs to do, which is to be held account. And it's never going to be held account if it's responsible for its own future. It needs to be accountable and answerable to an independent external oversight commission. And until that happens, we're wasting our time. But we have got what we've got, haven't we? We've got this this vote which is taking place tomorrow. Um, if, they, if they get this, I, I suppose it's hard to say, isn't it? You can't say this is the right candidate, this is the wrong candidate. But are some candidates more wrong than other candidates? No question. Uh, and I would suggest that Mr Infantino is one of those who's more wrong, as is Sheikh Salman, a gentleman with huge question marks hanging over his head and an inability to address legitimately those questions uh, and just shutting everybody down through uh, lawyers. I think, look, I, I really think that what we're just dealing with the same old, same old FIFA. I mean, we attempted four weeks ago to put on a presidential debate. Uh, that was shut down because Mr Infantino wrote to FIFA and said that what we were doing was tantamount to government, government interference. FIFA had the opportunity to shut that down immediately and let this go on and they decided not to. 
and the whole thing collapsed. And this was going to be televised. This was going to be the first time that we were going to have these five candidates responsible for answering questions about what they were going to do with moderators. Now, it was ludicrous that we were putting that on ourselves when if FIFA was genuine about reform, they would have done it themselves to give all of us a look of these guys. Yeah. Jamie, thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. Uh, You'll be able to hear what happens in that uh, contest to be the next FIFA president tomorrow afternoon here on Five Live. Liverpool threw then to the last 16 of the Europa League after a James Milner penalty helped them to a 1-0 win over German side Augsburg at Anfield, leaving Jurgen Klopp happy with the result. Yeah, we deserve to win then. We we were the better team, we created chances. We all had the one problem, we didn't use them. Didn't score off enough, that, that's the whole thing, but um, that's how football is sometimes and how we always say it's for us it's still a long way and um, the only problem was we couldn't control the game in the last 20 minutes. That's um, how it is and we, we, we forgot to make, make this decisive um, goal. But now after the game with a 1-0 um, I'm completely fine. As I know in this moment nobody, no injury um, and um, it was hard, that's how it should be and uh, now we're in the next round, well deserved. And that was Jürgen Klopp. Uh, some rugby scores to bring you this evening. Two Super League matches. It's Wigan 10, Salford 2 at halftime. Castleford Tigers beating Hull FC 18-12 at the KC. Commentary of that match over on 5 Live Sports Extra. And in the Pro 12 in Rugby Union, it's currently Newport Gwent Dragons 15, Glasgow 18. Well, I didn't think I'd say this, but in the Europa League last 32, could this, Ian Dennis, be a decisive 45 minutes for Manchester United this season? Well, not just for Manchester United. You'd have to question seriously the future of Louis van Gaal should they face a European exit tonight. We will know in the next 45 minutes. But if Manchester United, who in the tie are 3-2 down against this Danish side, Michelin, who were only formed 19 years ago, if Manchester United do make an exit, then you would have to think that the position of Louis van Gaal becomes untenable. Certainly very hard to see how he can retrieve the uh, the situation. But you never know. Manchester United um, might go out and run four goals in in this second half and all of a sudden it becomes a a comfortable victory. But uh, it's certainly a significant second half for both the club and the manager, one would think. Uh, Michelin have made a change in their all-black as Mata will work over the cross and they've conceded a corner through Spav. It's uh, Onyuachu who uh, got the winning goal in the first leg. He's come on to replace the number 11, Urena. So it's like for like, a striker for a striker. Manchester United haven't made a change, but it's a very inexperienced bench uh, when you consider the, uh, the injury problems that they've uh, had to deal with. I'll give you the two teams after... The corner kick has been taken. Five live and BBC Manchester at Old Trafford. In comes the corner on that far side. They're attacking the Stretford end. Two Michelin players both go for the same ball. It's one back by Lingard. Lingard then runs. Right corner of the penalty area. Stands still. Flicks it out behind him. And this is Mata who curls the ball into the penalty area. Schneidlin across the face of goal. Runs it across the six-yard area. And at the far post, it's cleared away. It was by Hansen who made the clearance. Riley will pick up this ball for Manchester United. If it goes goalwards, that's a goal for Schneidlin. It was off target, wasn't it, Ian? I think, it, I think he was actually going for the goal, but he just totally mishit it, Morgan Schneidlin. But what a chance. Again, that's the, it's almost coming from the knockdowns. That's what's causing the problems. When they, they, that's maybe why they are, have been taking quick, free, uh, quick uh, sh- uh, free kicks and short corners all evening. That, that's maybe what's trying to... Well, they're trying to cause the problems for Michelin. Took it there, it's actually come back out. Jesse Lingard did well to win it back, but nobody picked up Morgan Snydling coming round the far post and he actually should score he should do better with the position that he's in well Manchester United's uh, injury list lengthened uh, just ahead of uh, kickoff because uh, Martial picked up a hamstring injury in the warm-up so he was replaced by Marcus Rashford this 18 year old debutant local lad and here he is on the ball going in for a challenge with Hansen and winning a throw Romero is in goal Varela Carrick Blint and Joe Riley. The defence, Mata though for Manchester United as a break off. I'll give you the rest of that team after this latest United attack. It's 1-1 at Old Trafford. Herrera drags the ball back. 
Carrick will come onto this ball and plays it first time. Right footed along the ground towards that far side. United are playing from right to left. Red shirts, white shorts, white socks. And now it's with Schneidlin. Depay has made the run. Schneidlin has tried to pick him out. He was tracked though by Romer, who will clear. Onyuacho will lose out to Michael Carrick. Quite comfortably there for Carrick to play the ball towards Rashford. And then it's back out with Riley. A little touch on the uh, the left back to Depay. Forward towards Rashford, who'd rolled his man and then was uh, invited the free the, the challenge and gets a free kick. And it's a direct free kick, but it's 35 yards out from goal. Quickly tell you, Mata Schneidlin, Lingard, Herrera, Depay and Rashford are the United players. And here is Depay, who's had Romare every single time. He works over the cross and the header is wide by Herrera. And some here in the main stand thought it had actually gone in. Oh, has he missed that? I mean, it, it rippled the net, but it was the side netting from Herrera. It's a free header, it's slight angle that's against him under Herrera. Immediately taken from Joe Riley, the quick free kick. I'm sure that's what Louis van Gaal said at half-time, get the ball to Memphis. He's causing Romer so many problems, but that's a free header. He's just, what, six, seven yards out free. Oh, it's an open goal, and he should be scoring. That's a glorious opportunity for Ander Herrera. I don't know about you, but as, as, a, as a neutral and as an observer, you just feel that the United goal will come. Yeah. It, well, it's just the, the, the causing... Well, you say get to Memphis. Memphis is causing that many problems down, down the United's left-hand side. Get him on the ball, and Romer just cannot deal with him under any circumstances. You can just give the foul away there. That might be the best thing for him to do. However, a 2-1 scoreline for Manchester United... Yeah. Extra. ...only potentially extends the tie. We then have extra time and, uh, and, and penalties, so... We've got to get that first, one, that's the thing. And, but I agree with you, though, Ian. It, it, it certainly feels the way that United are playing, the way that they're pressing, and the way that, actually, Mitchell and are defending, they're not defending great, are they? You know, every time United put crosses in, they look vulnerable. And I think that, again, could be the way in. Get, when they do get it wide, put the cross in early. Don't necessarily always want to come back on the inside and look for that through ball. Get Memphis on the ball, get him wide, get him beating his man. Almost old-fashioned in many respects, but that is where they're getting the joy. The problems will come if Mitchell and score again. Yes. A second away goal, and uh, all of a sudden, Manchester United then would really have problems. Here is Olsen, and that's what they're threatening now. They've got a man over, it's Romare. He stands the ball up in towards the penalty area. Here is Hassan. Sorry, it's Sisto with a cross gathered in at his near post by Romero they get bodies forward though don't they when, when they do break United's flow down and break their attacks down that time they have five bodies in the United penalty area Lingard plenty of space to run into right hand side right corner of the penalty area cross takes the deflection clearance at the first time of asking wasn't affected by Hansen. he had a second chance to put it away Lingard will pick it back up again into the penalty area onto his left foot shot sticks the deflection and loops behind for a corner it's never comfortable, is it? Except United again, it's just a, out wide, get a, get a cross in. Hansen is time and time again, as well as Bodoroff. When the ball's coming, it's, it's just slashing clearance, slashing your foot at it. Poor clearance, there's no relaxed clearance just to put your uh, foot through it, put your head, a nice, comfortable head through it when you've got the opportunity. It's almost real, real tension when the ball gets put into the area. Attacking the Stretford end, 1-1 one, one on the night. Blint, outswinging corner, headed away. Lingard picks it up midway through the Michelin half to Riley. Riley along the ground, cut out though by Olsen for the all black of Michelin. And Olsen keeps the ball in play and then plays it down the line. And Jakob Paulsen is onto it now. And all of a sudden, Michelin on the attack. Jakob Paulsen looks up, time to measure the cross, floats it over. Romero claws the ball away. And it needed to be clawed away because Sisto was lurking behind him. Well, it's great movement actually from Sisto. Joe Riley was tracking the run all the way back into the area. He went. So far post initially tried to dart across the near post. Joe Riley read that, so he peeled away to the far post. But Romero did well. Saw the cross all the way and got his hand to it. One goal for Manchester United. Would take us to the possibility of extra time. Two goals would see them through, providing that Michelin don't score again. It's 1-1 on the night. Tottenham, though, are heading through to join Liverpool in the next stage. Liverpool third courtesy of that James Milner penalty. Lingard was tugged back there by Sisto. That really should have been a free kick. It's not uh, awarded by the Hungarian referee. It goes out for a goal kick to Michelin. 
founded 19 years ago, an amalgamation of two clubs in, uh, in Jutland, Ekast and Herning Fremad, by two local businessmen, a carpenter and a Mercedes dealer, would you believe? And uh, Matthew Benham has since got involved, and they're a club that has gone from strength to strength. They won the Danish Championship in 2015, but for a club in their formative years, they could be producing one hell of an achievement tonight in their history and as far as the football club goes still the embryonic history in many ways 19 years well formed in 1999 but here they are against the mighty Manchester United mind you the Manchester United side that uh, has problems as matter is caught offside but as there. each minute ticks by yes the tension then increases. Well, it is, you know, I think what Mitchell need to do, first and foremost, you see, look at little spells in the game, get the 50, first 15 minutes out of the way in this half, get that little spell out of the way, try and see any danger through, and of course then you look through last half an hour of the match, try and see the next 15 minutes, and then you, you look in little spells, that's what I'm sure is in the mindset of um, of the Michelin players here, just try and see little spells through, and United have come out, again causing problems, but Michelin themselves, with that attack going forward as well, that's where United can't be too hurried into getting the ball forward quickly into sending bodies forward because they are a threat they've got pace in this side and Paulson as you mentioned the first half Ian about that being that link man if they get him on the ball he does have that creative spark to his game the voice of the former Irish international Kevin Kilban who's with us tonight here at Old Trafford for Five Live and BBC Manchester and making the run is Hassan, he keeps the ball in play, he's got some support from Romer behind him, Hassan is forced out wide but he'll win a corner, had to take it early, he was on the move, right down by the byline, strikes the body of Riley, the left back, and behind for a corner for Michelin, you mentioned before, they like the set pieces, let's see what they can do with this corner kick. Yes, exactly, Same set piece, coach, even mentioned before, that they have a set piece taker, uh, sorry, set piece coach for the actual taker, so he's obviously looking at the strike, how he's hitting the ball, very, very clever, you saw Louis van Gaal even say this week he copied off a set play that Michelin took against them last week against Shrewsbury this week in the Cup. Ten minutes into the second half, it's 1-1 on the night. Trying to look to see who's uh, placed the ball down, it might well be Novak. And indeed it is, Novak with a corner, comes off an outstretched leg at the near post, gathered in by the goalkeeper Romero. He's going to kick this long, right-footed, and it just bypasses with one bounce to Pai. And Paulson is back there, and Paulson will play the ball forward. It was cut out by the left leg of Depay, but only out of play for a throw. Yeah, he's got away with it, hasn't it? Memphis read it. So we give him the big build-up, didn't we? Novak with the corner. Yeah. <laughs> that was poor, wasn't it? Yeah, that's one still to work on, I think. <laughs> 11 minutes into the second half. Onoachu, it's about six foot seven, you know. No, he's right. a 21-year-old Nigerian forward. He was uh, out on loan at, uh, at Vila last season. He finished well last week as well, didn't he? The goal that he'd, he'd scored, he had a header that was brilliantly saved from Romero just prior to that as well. He's a handful. Well, it's his 50th appearance for the club. He's only scored the eight goals. He looks with his baggy shorts there you can, and his black socks all the way right up. You can, you can hardly see the, uh, the, the skin there at all, can he? looks like more like a basketball player yeah. with his baggy shirt and his baggy shorts and he's, what, six foot seven? Yeah, he looks with the, uh, the little flick header there for the number 33, cleared away by Blint. Spa, that seemed to be a handball from Sisto, but the referee just lets play continue. There was no advantage, just don't think he spotted it as, uh, as Lingard will come forward for Manchester United. 1-1 one, one on the night. Stretching. And now it's back, and the cross comes in, fired in! Oh, that was a good clearance. It was Better. an awkward one for Romer, because into his own six-yard area, facing his own goal, he's got to clear it fully with That's a volley what, on the left foot. That's what I say before, with, with Hansen and Bodoroff, they haven't done that with the clearances. That time Romer got himself back into position, and it was a relaxed clearance, was he? He didn't just try to crash it forward as, as hard as he could, he just a relaxed clearance. That's what you need to be doing in those positions. And it was good clearance from Romero, again, tracking the run from Memphis. Manchester United unbeaten in nine games at home in Europe since they lost to Real Madrid by two goals to one in 2013. Well, that run might well be extended if it was to stay like this, but it wouldn't be good enough for Manchester United. They still need one more goal. We're approaching the hour mark. And, again, as an observer, 
they haven't appeared to gather the same sort of momentum at the start of this second half than they managed to produce in the first. No, they haven't. A little bit... You, you mentioned before, though, it's that nervousness that, that could creep in, though, isn't it, Ian? That's, that's the one thing. And this man, Paulson, he's the one that's causing a few problems. He's getting the ball, he's been that link man, getting forward a little bit more as well. Look how many bodies are getting forward now as well. Being a little bit more expansive, I'm sure that's what... The coach has, uh, has said to them at half-time, I'm sure he's just had a chat to him, Jess Thorup, I think he said, look, when you do get the ball forward, when you do get one of your attacking players into the game, be a little bit more ambitious throw, and they're certainly doing that at the start of this half. Well, that's the, the, the fear factor now, is if Michelin were to score again, Manchester United then would require three goals. So there is that, they've got something now, there's a, there's a, a, there's a risk yeah. to Manchester United's play now, which Louis van Gaal will hate. We all know how he likes to be the pressing Cautious, though, risk free. Pressing a bit more than our own. Higher up the see. pitch. Yeah, yeah, definitely higher up the pitch. I think that'll help them out defensively as well. Long clearance by Romero. Rashford jumps into the challenge with Hansen. Sparv will turn away from Mata, plays it back to Bodoroff on loan from Fulham. His clearance is picked up by Varela, plays it forward, and now Herrera is unmarked and is able to run forward, and it's out towards that far side, and coming in off that right touch line is Lingard. Herrera loses the ball, it's won back by the dark shirts of Michelin, and they've given the ball away. Herrera along the ground towards Depay, Depay into the penalty area, Depay's shot, good block coming in from Hansen behind for a corner. Yeah, Romero sloppy there, tried to beat Morgan Snydlin, giving the ball away. Corner taken quickly on the left-hand side, attacking the Stretford end, here is Blint. Blint comes a little bit in field, back towards Depay, it's a right-footed cross, it was an in-swinger, headed away once again. The Michelin bench are desperate for those dark shirts to push it out, I think they feel they're sitting a little bit too deep, inviting Manchester United onto them. Carrick floats the ball back out towards this near side, taken hard on the chest by Depay, volleys over the cross, cleared away once again by Hansen. Cushion ball along the ground by Blint towards Riley. They look to try and build. Riley links up with Depay. It's a low ball in towards the penalty area. Rashford cuts the ball back. Matter was arriving. Still the danger remains. Back with Riley. Left hand side of the penalty area. Down towards the byline. Cuts the ball in. Outstretched ball inside that outstretched leg inside that six yard area. And the goalkeeper really does urge his defence to push on out now as Onuachu can come forward and he'll win a free kick from that foul challenge by Daly Blint just to give their defence a little bit of respite well, well my watch now says that we've been playing for just over an hour there was a two on one at the far side well I actually don't think Daly Blint needs to make the challenge there Onyuachu's in a, he's going away from goal he's got Michael Carrick on cover just keep him going that way sloppy from Daly Blint no. talk about the set plays sorry and this is a prime example of the positions that they'll be working on Napoli won Villarreal 1, so the Spanish side lead 2-1 on aggregate. It's going to be an in-swinging free kick because Novak is going to take this. It's 1-1 on the night on 5 Live in BBC Manchester. 61 minutes played. Manchester United cannot afford to concede another goal. Tottenham are heading through. They lead Fiorentina 1-0. Novak curling ball into the penalty area. Romero punches the ball away. The referee has said play on. He's played the advantage. He obviously spotted an infringement, but Manchester United are breaking. Right-hand side. And this is with Herrera to Lingard, just in from the right touchline, midway through the Michelin half. Referee's blown his whistle, and it's a throw. And the, there's been another goal in North London, back to Alistair Bruce Ball. Eric Lamella loves the Europa League. It's Tottenham 2, Fiorentina 0 on the night from a rebound. It was Chadley's shot that was saved, but only palmed out into the penalty area and Lamella did really well on the turn hit it sweetly Tottenham lead 2-0 on the night and 3-1 on aggregate joining Liverpool in the next round Liverpool beat Augsburg by a goal to nil the draw tomorrow at midday you'll hear it here on 5 Live the question is will Manchester United or the name of Michelin be in that draw Michelin, along with Mulder, who are going out, have had the longest campaign in the last 32. They both started in the second qualifying round of the Champions League in mid-July. This is their 14th game of this European excursion. First time they've gone into the spring stages of any UEFA competition as Dubai does the little step over, cuts inside, blocked by Hansen, outstretched left leg, picked up by Herrera. You can sense a little bit more anxiety from the faithful inside Old Trafford. Desperate for the goal. 
to keep their hopes alive. Lingard, right-hand side, down towards the byline, fires over the cross, Hansen's header away, collected by Schneidling, cries of shoot, passes to Herrera, he himself will go square. Varela with a cross, Depay's rising up early, Mata with a cut back! It's Rashford! On his debut, the 18-year-old Marcus Rashford has marked his debut with a goal to bring Manchester United level in the tie as they laid 2-1 on the night. Well, it's another cross coming into the area. When United have crossed the ball tonight, that's where Michelin have struggled. And it's a ball to the far post. One matter read it. He read that Romer wasn't quite in touch with his centre-half. The ball went over his head and then one matter with the awareness to pull it back into an area. And Rashford, he's the first one to react. Seven yards out. The whole goal to hit. It's a good finish from Rashford. But well done, one matter. He's alert. He's in the position to pull the ball back and it's another cross going into the area. That's something that United have got to learn when you get it wide, put balls in because that's where Mitchell do struggle. Marcus Rashford only starting because of an injury to Martial. An unlikely saviour. However, they still, Manchester United, need A, to be wary of a goal for Michelin, but they still need to score again to win it in the regulation 90. This is the only scoreline that could guarantee extra time. And Mata with the assist now plays in the 18-year-old Rashford. And he's done well. Slips his shoulder, drops his man. And will win a corner kick. He's buoyed by that goal. Manchester United have their tails up. Well, I think he's played well, Rashford. He, you know, he's not had too many goal-scoring opportunities. He's run channels when perhaps he should stay more central at times, but I think he's been positive. As you say there, that's a brilliant run from him. Skipping away from a couple of defenders. Excellent from Rashford. Varela to Riley. Hassan will put pressure on Blint in the centre circle of the... Mitchell and Haar back out towards that far side, the right for Varela. Manchester United playing from right to left. Manchester United 2, Mitchell and 1. Here is Herrera. Varela's got time to pick his spot. Doesn't beat the first man blocked by Paulson. It's a Manchester United throw. 65 minutes played. Hasn't been straightforward, but Manchester United... With that second goal. We've said it the way, haven't we? We, said it, we, we both have felt it was, it was going yeah. to come for United at some stage. They have been totally dominant in possession. So often we've seen them dominate in possession this season. They haven't created an awful lot of chances. Whereas tonight, they've created a, a host of chances, really. They should have taken one or two more of the, the chances that's come their way. You can feel that that tension that had been building has just been eased somewhat with that goal for, uh, for Rashford. The problem would, of course, for, to concede again. That's what they've got to be wary of, because it, very soon, Michelin are going to think, well, let, we've got nothing to lose. Yeah. They're going to make a change as well. It's uh, Václav Kadlets who's going to be coming on. Uh, he once had a trial at, uh, at Liverpool uh, back in 2007. He's replaced Hassan. He's 23 years of age, actually once uh, watched him play for Sparta Prague against Liverpool in this competition. His uh, career has somewhat stalled since he went to Eintracht Frankfurt. He was only signed in, uh, in January. But again, it's a, it's a positive substitution that has been made by their 46-year-old coach, Jess Thorup. That's Lev Kadletz, the Czech Republic international, who has maybe not necessarily fulfilled his, his potential since he uh, came onto the scene at, uh, at Sparta Prague. But nevertheless, it's a sign of intent from Michelin with some, what, 23 minutes remaining. 2-1 Manchester United leading on the night. 3-3 on aggregate. Michelin now a forward. And it's with Sisto. Curling ball in, that'll go away from Onyachu, and it's out of play for a throw. Hull FC 18, Castleford 18 is the latest score in the Super League. Commentary continues on 5 Live Sports Extra. Tomorrow, Wales against France in the Six Nations, after Mark Chapman has probably looked ahead to some of the football. Saturday from midday, we've got West Ham, Sunderland, Leicester against Norwich, and then England, Ireland in the Six Nations at 4.50. We've got 
the super bantamweight title, a title fight uh, between Carl Frampton and Scott Quigg, providing that they can sort out that row about the dressing rooms. That's at 10 o'clock. And the League Cup final as well on Sunday as well. So plenty of live sport to look forward to as Rashford dispossesses Spar. Rashford pays the ball out towards Lingard. He's forced out a little bit wider on that right-hand side. Manchester United still on the attack. Lingard goes on the outside. It's a heavy ball in and it drifts behind for a goal kick. They did well, actually, didn't you, Rashford? Dispossessed Spav, who was in a good position. That's where they have been caught out tonight, I felt tonight, Mitch, and they haven't moved the ball quick enough when they've been in comfortable possession of the ball. Taken three and four touches, and that's where they've been caught out again. Rashford, I would have just liked him to maybe take a, take a strike on there. As he's driving at Mixland's back two in Bodorov and Hansen, take your strike on, or even go and try and commit Bodorov. Decided to go wide to Lingard, just overhit the pass. I can say this with a great deal of authority with the scoreline at this stage. I notice when I say that, everybody looked in my direction and say, really? But we will have extra time of some sorts on Five Live, whether it's extra time here, if it's 2-1 to Manchester United, or if not, we'll have question time, extra time, at a quarter past ten with Stephen Nolan and John Pina. Uh, in my notes, I had Marcus Rashford as scoring uh, 13 goals for the under-18s last season. But uh, according to Gary... Um, this season he scored for the under-18, then the 19, then the 21s, and the first team this season. Third play, yeah. So he's, uh, Good lad. he's an 18-year-old with an eye for goal. But you said it before, though. You know, we had a call at half-time as well, and didn't we saying about Van Gaal has given youth a chance? He's had no option to in no. many respects. Schneidlin in towards Depay. Depay on that right foot, just couldn't get the challenge, he's won it back though, Depay back inside the penalty area, Depay trying to dance his way through, he scoops it goalwards, and eventually it's cleared away, very uncertain defending by Michelin, and Depay is quite a menace. Oh he is, I, I, I'm sure he's going to think, how have I not scored this evening, perhaps he could have taken the strike on with his left foot, never really comfortable, maybe the angle was slightly against him, but as you say, he sent three players for a pie at the end of the stand there, all three diving in at him, Going in for the cross, and it's just lovely play from him. Just can't quite get it over Anderson. Did you do that on purpose to pie for a pie? <laughs> that reminds me, whilst there's a break in play, there's, a, there's an injury. They've got a lad on the bench called Christian Backback, right? But his surname is Back, spelt B A C H, right? But he, sorry, it, his surname is spelt Back as in B A K. He then married somebody else with Back, B A C H. So they've actually called themselves back back. <laughs> and guess what position he plays? <laughs> I would say at the back, somewhere at the back. <laughs> <a defender. laughs> and tonight is his comeback from injury. So the Danish commentator who told me about that was saying that back back, playing at the back, making his comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester United with the pie, heading the ball on, cut out, win back again by referee going to give a penalty is he no no he's not he's going to give uh, a yeah. free kick it's a penalty I think as and well, it's Lingard you know. who's going to get a yellow card I would imagine for diving indeed he is well, Chris Jason's getting involved there's a little bit of afters with that and I think it's Hanson that makes the challenge the second half doesn't see Lingard coming I think it's a penalty. It looked a penalty to me. He goes to ground. When you go to ground like that, I mean, he's, it's more the com it's a commitment in the challenge, isn't it? That's the thing. There isn't a lot of contact within it, but I think he's actually having to jump out of the way of it, Lingard. The referee saw it as a dive. He said there wasn't a lot of contact, but it's, as soon as you go to ground like that in the penalty, and you've committed to the challenge, he doesn't win the ball. I think he's got away with it, and I do. Brave call from the Hungarian referee, who's now given a free kick in favour of Michelin. Let's go back to White Hart Lane and Alistair Bruce Ball. Tottenham heading for the last 16 quite comfortably, leading Fiorentina 2-0 on the night. First half goal from Ryan Mason, Lamella with the second. Tottenham have been impressive and Fiorentina very disappointing. With that, it is back back to you, Ian. <laughs> 17 and a bit minutes remaining. Five live and BBC Manchester. Manchester United 2, Michelin 1. Manchester United have got a high line for this free kick. It's almost midway through the Manchester United half. They're trying to get that line just on the edge of the D. And it comes now from Paulson, headed away by Rashford. Back in, flicked on by Onuachu. The referee then has said there was a free kick. 
ironic cheers by the home support. Old Trafford far from full, but Manchester United looking for the decisive third goal to see them through and to join Liverpool and Tottenham in the hat for the last 16 tomorrow. Riley, urged on by Blint, keeps the ball in play. Win will win a corner as well of the player who trapped that with him, who was Cadlex. Well, it's a brilliant ball from Daly Blint, the outside of his left foot, as you say, freeing up Riley. Taken short, Mata to Depay. Depay shoots low, could go anywhere. It actually came off, I think, Hanson's leg. It was such a crowded penalty area. It was again off his right foot, it's diverted behind for a corner kick. He hasn't been comfortable, has he? And when the balls have been zipped into the penalty area, it's almost just swinging a hopeful leg at it. Never a comfortable clearance. And they've got away with it again there, that time Hanson, as you say. In comes the corner, Onuachu will head it away, helped on by another header this time by Paulson. Depay though will try and give him the slip, he checks back, they've doubled up on Depay, here comes the footwork, try the little back heel, loses out, Sisto then will scoop it up towards Olsen, that was cut out and well read by Varela who now darts forward himself and Varela continues to go forward, here is Rashford inside the penalty area, overran it, clearance away from the Michelin defence, Depay though has it, traps the ball, stands still, Moves the ball backwards, helped out by Riley, plays it forward with Varela. On this left-hand side, Manchester United lead 2-1 on the night. BBC Radio 5 live. And BBC Manchester here at Old Trafford as Blint will come forward. Cries of shoot, Blint to Lingard, right side, Mata. Working the ball, keeping, passing it sharply, Manchester United. Lingard now coming in field, 30 yards out from goal. Matter then towards Varela, right-hand side of the penalty area, Varela with the cross, he's done it again, it's a dream debut for Marcus Rashford, his first appearance in the red shirt of Manchester United, and two goals in the second half will steer them through maybe to the last 16 of the Europa League, it's a night he will never forget, Manchester United 3. Michelin won. Oh, what a debut for Marcus Rashford. Ghosted into here again. It's another cross from out wide. That's what's caused so many problems for Michelin all night. Excellent run forward. You say I think it's Ferreira, isn't it, that gets forward. He checks onto his left foot. And every time, as I said before, every time they've crossed it with real purpose, United tonight, it's caused problems for Michelin. They can't get into positions. Romero comes narrow with his centre half, and Rashford just free, totally free six yards out and he's got the simple task of just finishing but credit Rashford for making up the ground getting on the end of the cross say what a debut that is Louis van Gaal's delighted for him Manchester United now are leading on aggregate by four goals to three the response from Michelin will be interesting they have Got to have a go now at Manchester United in these closing, what, 13 and a half minutes. But Manchester United, for the first time, have the aggregate lead in this second leg. They're leading by three goals to one. Marcus Rojo is going to be coming on as well. He said he could only play 20 minutes. It's going to be a welcome return. Amazing sometimes, isn't it, about fate for managers. I mean, Martial, but Rashford only thrown in, probably wouldn't, maybe not even started if Martial's yeah. fit, and then through unforeseen set of circumstances, starts and then scores the two goals in the second half. He might have just sat there all night as well on the bench here, mightn't he? But you say, it's brilliant for him as well. That's what happens in football. Your opportunity comes and you've got to take it. And he certainly hasn't looked out of place, has he, tonight? I think, he's, I think he started the game well. He went out of the match at times, but that was by and large down to the way that uh, Mitchell were defending deep and he wasn't really finding too much space for himself, but everything he did was, was positive, everything he did was right. Two and three touches on the ball, little, little layoffs, he was doing the right things for his team and he's got his rewards. Look positive, he's looked sharp. Well, his two goals will certainly catapult his name into the wider circles. The ardent Manchester United supporters would be aware of his prolific form for the youth and the under-21 side but here he is again he's on for a hat-trick towards Depay who went for the chip back in towards Rashford and it's cleared away by uh, by Hansen 
That would top it off if he could go home with the uh, the match ball as well. Manchester United, though, are still on the attack. Mata to Depay. Depay curls over the cross and it was aimed towards Rashford. Everybody inside Old Trafford is willing him to score that third goal. It was headed over seven yards out. And uh, it is a goal kick. I think his teammates are as well in, aren't they? Memphis, when he got his head up initially in that attack going forward, trying to pick out Rashford that time. Good ball into the area, he saw Rashford. Rashford just couldn't quite get the header on target, though. Marcus Rojo replacing Joe Riley. Michelin are going to make a change as well, so we'll go to White Hart Lane and Alistair Bruce Ball. 11 minutes left, Tottenham 2, Fiorentina nil on the night. Tottenham cruising into the last 16, but Deli Alley will miss the first leg of their next tie. He's just been booked for diving here. Rather harshly, I thought. The defender did push him slightly. He made a bit of a meal of it, but he got the yellow card. He's out of the first leg of the last 16 game. Tottenham 2, Fiorentina nil. Joining Liverpool in the next stage. Manchester United should also go through. Outrageous skill. Mata with a cutback into the penalty area, that was from Depay, fancy little flick, he's oozing with confidence, isn't he, Kevin Kilbane? Yes, he is, I mean, he's had, a, he's had a big night, hasn't he? Memphis as well, but every time Memphis has been on the ball tonight, it's been electric, Romero, the fullback, just hasn't known how to deal with him, oh, that's a brilliant nutmeg, wasn't it? <laughs> Matter as well has been, been excellent when they've got in advanced positions. Rojo's at it now, Rojo with a cross, Rashford just couldn't bring the ball down inside the penalty area. The change that they've made, by the way, Martin Pusic, who's uh, an Austrian forward, has come on to replace Olsen, the former Arsenal Academy player, as uh, Blint to Rojo, struggling to keep that ball in play. It's out of play for a throw to Michelin. Michelin, of course, because Manchester United's lead is still tight, 4-3 on aggregate, one goal for Michelin changes the dynamics of the tie once again so we still have a lot to play for on BBC Five Live and BBC Radio Manchester 10 minutes of normal time remaining yeah, so we, we have spoke about the set plays from Mitchell tonight that have actually been quite poor but Daily Blint it's a sloppy free kick to give away again rolled on the right hand side Paulson then works over the cross and the header from Onoachu is over and wide and that will be a goal kick. United saw that last week with Onuachu when he come off the bench. Tested Romero out with a, a really good header that was brilliantly saved from Romero that time. Pulling onto the opposite centre-half with Michael Carrick. Getting a clean head in it as well. Perhaps should be doing better there, really. Back to Ali at uh, White Hart Lane. Tottenham 3, Fiorentina 0. Been a desperately disappointing night for the Italians. An own goal from their Argentine centre-back, Gonzalo Rodriguez. He had to try and intercept the trippy across because Deli Ali was right behind him. But he provided a thumping finish. Tottenham's third goal on the night. 3-0 tonight. 4-1 on aggregate. Good result for Tottenham as Depay is away from Romare. Romare tries to get back in, back at him. Shoulder barge. Depay now in towards the penalty area. Romare, though, this time at the second time. Says, you're not getting past me. And the clearance eventually from Cadlets is left by Schneidlin. Onuachu then will come forward. Schneidlin tries to win it back. Those long telescopic legs of Onuachu, though, will win the ball back for Michelin. And then Sparv will pass the ball out towards that far side. And it's with Pusic, and Pusic will play the ball forward. And it's with Sisto over on that far side, and it's a Michelin throw. They've still got to be wary of that goal. That's how tight it is. It could quickly go away from them for Manchester United. They don't have the luxury or indeed the cushion that Tottenham have of the goals that they've scored at White Hart Lane. Comfortably going through to the last 16. The ball chipped forward for Manchester United. Cut out, though, by Bodorov, the Bulgarian international. Sisto. Referee's blown his whistle. And it'll be a free kick to, uh, to Mitchell on the halfway. Kevin Kilburn. Yeah, just look, looking again. It was brilliant skill from Memphis on, on our near side here. I don't know what Romero's going to think when he watches this video back. Sometimes, you know, when you have had a, a bad night, played a bit of fullback myself against a couple of quick wingers. Here, and you've got to watch your game back and see what you can put right in if you can you've got to try and learn from it and he's he certainly had a, a a huge night against a player that's been banging for him in Memphis tonight Louis van Gaal who when the third goal went in seemed to be sharing a joke with uh, with Ryan Giggs 
Didn't show much emotion with the uh, the second goal, the first of Rashford's, but his second one certainly brought a smile to the face of the 64-year-old who won the UEFA Cup in its former guise, of course, with Ajax in the early 90s. Manchester United probably aware that this route is their best route for Champions League football for next season. They are, at least as it stands, looking to join Liverpool and Tottenham in the next stage. We have seven minutes remaining of normal time. Michelin have lost a lot of their fizz. They're not really posing much of a threat in this uh, in this second half. They have gone with the two up front, though, now with Michelin, Pusic and Onuachu, headed forward by Bodorov, but Manchester United have the control in the midfield. And Rojo playing at left-back comes over the halfway line. Depay will lose out, though, to Roma. Rojo wins it back. Romo go, Roma goes to ground, Rojo can come forward, it's a low ball into the penalty area, taken in his stride by Mata, Mata towards the byline, he was looking towards Lingard, swept away by the Michelin defence, and not kept in play by Cadlets, and that'll be a Manchester United throw, Kevin. Yeah, he did well there, Novak, brilliant from Juan Mata, I think it was Rojo was actually looking to try and find Rashford centrally, but Mata, with a great run right across him, took the ball in his stride, looking for... Lingard oh, at the far post. Lovely drop of the shoulder by uh, by Rashford. Playing more, belying his, uh, his tender age there, wasn't he? As he tried to beat his man. Just confidence now, isn't it? Full of confidence. He's going to try anything. Lingard on the right-hand side for Manchester United. The aggregate lead is four goals to three in favour of Manchester United. They lead 3-1 on the night here. That will be a free kick, will it? Yeah. yeah, to Manchester United. The one thing with, with Rashford as well, though, Ian, I think what's impressed me about him as well, he came into the, at the start of the match making runs uh, left and right, you know, in, in central areas as well. And you can tie yourself out quite quickly because it's his debut as well. I think he calmed himself down after that initial start. and Everything he did was with, with, with quality, you know, I mentioned before, one and two touch up front, being a, a good link man as a centre forward, trying to um, make runs to free up space for his teammates as well. I think he's been clever with his movement tonight. So... Certainly a credit to him how well he's performed with such maturity. Just to say, with five minutes remaining, Manchester United, they've got two Pereiras on the bench. Andreas Pereira is going to be coming on very, very soon for Manchester United. We cannot have extra time now, so a goal for Michelin would mean that Manchester United would have to go to the other end and quickly score again. So that's how tight it is with the four and a bit minutes that uh, that remain and now the substitution will be made and the player to be coming off is Jesse Lingard a little bit like London buses it's uh, just over three weeks since they last played at home and this is the first of three home games Arsenal come here on Sunday and with the injury situation as it is Martial depending on how bad that hamstring injury is sustaining the warm-up he might not be fit to uh, to face Arsenal, the team he, of course, played against last season for Monaco in the Champions League. Andreas Pereira coming on to replace Lingard. You've just seen the, the replays of the penalty where Lingard was brought down. I think it was Hansen that made the challenge. He actually thought he'd give the penalty away. I think he knew there was contact on Lingard initially. And I think the way that the referee was, or the position that the referee was in, was stood. He doesn't see the initial contact. And I think then he sees Lingard going over. That's why he didn't give the penalty and booked Lingard for diving. Manchester United, though, Louis van Gaal will be delighted with his second half because yeah. they've, they've had that element of control that he demands from his players. Here is Depay. Depay deserves to go on the score sheet. That was handball, surely. Yes, it was. Outstretched hand by Kieran Hansen. Clear penalty, and Manchester United have the opportunity to put this game to bed. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not in favour of, of these sort of handballs. Very, very close to Romero's. Lingard went to take the strike, but he's gaining an advantage. His hand is in the natural position. Clear handball. Good decision from the referee. They're not giving it to Ra yet. they're not giving it to Rashford, who's on a hat trick. Oh. Instead, they want to see this through. And well. It's Herrera, and Herrera scores where Mata failed to score in the first half. Herrera sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, sends Mitchelland out, and Manchester United, after a scare, are through to the last 16 in the Europa League. Yeah, excellent penalty, and Herrera is confident, he's positive. He gives Anderson the eyes, he's looking to try to play to the goalkeeper's left, I think that's where Anderson goes, and then he whips it immediately back across his body, high and away into the top corner. 
excellent penalty from Herrera. Just going to go back to instant, sorry, Ian, as well. It, it is a penalty that Hand is in a natural position, he's gaining an advantage. Sometimes we see them where you know, hands down by your side, and we, you know, referees do give these sort of decisions. I'm not in favour of them when they're perhaps not gaining that advantage, but that clearly was it. The shot was on target from Memphis. The referee made a great decision. Well, they've just gone and called uh, another player towards them. Uh, it looks like Regan Poole may well be coming on in these closing stages. And I just wonder if maybe that's to say to Marcus Rashford, you can come off. And those that remain, because they are heading for the exits now inside Old Trafford to try and beat the traffic, to get the standing ovation that maybe he deserves for his two goals. Because without those two goals, Manchester United would be facing an exit. Yeah, you're a man of knowledge, Ian. I think that could be right there. Good decision. I think from uh, Van Gaal to take him off, as you say, give him the reception that he does deserve. He's had a great night. I hope when we're playing in our five-a-side in a few weeks, you've got that sort of knowledge about you as well, Ian. Meanwhile, the referee has just shown a second yellow card to Roma. The right back was booked in the first half. He's just had a tug of the shirt of Depay. Yeah. The referee showed the yellow card and then after a minor delay has just followed up with a red so they're actually down to 10 men I said they were starting to lose the discipline well, and they've now finished it with 10 men he, Roma centre he's had a nightmare hasn't he he really has he's struggled to contain Memphis throughout this game Memphis has just had the measure in him from, from the first minute of the match and that's just frustration he's just got the better of him Romer and he's pulled um, Memphis back Clean, it was an easy decision clearly the referee's in a good position to see it as well and deserves to be sent off to Pai Coming forward, Depay shoots low, and Depay right-footed buries the ball past the goalkeeper into the bottom left-hand corner. It hasn't been as straightforward as the scoreline suggests, but they're finishing with a real romp. Manchester United 5, Michelin 1. And if anybody deserved the goal tonight, it had to be Memphis. He has been the best player on the pitch by far. Positive when he's had the ball, he's been great. If he's freed up teammates when necessary at times, he's played cleverly. He's looked so good when he's been coming inside as well and say he deserves the strike. It's actually Tim Spar that doesn't get out to him quick enough. He allows Memphis to take the strike and he goes to the near post. He deceives Anderson. You say that man deserves it. Excellent performance from Memphis tonight. You know, I said that Marcus Rashford might be coming off. Uh, it's Herrera who's going to be coming off, actually. <laughs> so much for a man of knowledge. Uh, and Regan Poole will be coming on to, uh, to make his, uh, his debut. 17-year-old signed from Newport County for initial £100,000 back in September. Basel 1, San Etienne 1. So San Etienne now lead 4-3 in aggregate. So Basel, who will host this final of the competition on the 18th of May. But Manchester United 5, Michelin 1. But you think that it was only when they scored that third goal 15 minutes from time were Manchester United certain of going through. It's a deceiving scoreline in some respects. Yes, you say. I think it just relieved... You, you were talking about it, Ian. They had to get that third goal just to relieve that pressure. It wasn't massive pressure on the players, but you were starting to get that little bit of tension in the air at Old Trafford, and it's just lifted the roof, and of course now the players can relax and the goals have started to flow more freely after that. So Manchester United 5, Mitchell and 1. And we're into the three minutes of added on time on 5 Live. Maybe they've not finished yet. This is Mata. Mata in towards Rashford. He's on a hat-trick, of course, and it's cleared away by Spav out towards that far side Manchester United now playing with so much freedom they know that they're going through and here is Pereira with the shots and it runs across the face of goal and out for a goal kick yeah freedom creativity that's it Pereira angle was really against him there and if he scored a goal from there I think you'd be questioning Anderson the goalkeeper didn't really get hold of it as it would like he was always dragging it wide but he's got the conference to take the strike on now with the five goals that United have. Remember when Ellie at half time read out that text or a tweet that had come in that said shambles, 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 shambles. I wonder what uh, that particular supporter is feeling now. The thing is, though, Ian, I, mean, we, I think we said it as well. I wouldn't, you know, I think at times I, I've certainly been critical of Van Gaal the way that they've played, but throughout that first half, Mitchell got the goal, didn't really 
provide an attacking threat. I have to say that it was all United. I think United were creating chances throughout, and they, did, they probably they could have had six or seven tonight. Let's be honest. I think they were comfortable going forward at times, and they needed that little bit of luck. They got it with that third goal, and then the goals have flowed freely since. And you know, Van Gaal will come out after the game and obviously be very very positive in the, the manner in which his team's gone about it but it's been very very comfortable for United this victory tonight Basel are back in front at the San Jacob Stadium uh, it'll be an atmospheric stadium to host the final on the 18th of May but there's so they're going through on the away goals rule and Manchester United in the end with a scoreline with the last 15 minutes comfortably going through Manchester United 5 Mitchell and 1 but it was only with those three goals in the last 15 minutes that drastically changed the outcome of this tie because before then they were forced very very hard against the Michelin side who in the end finished with 10 men but Manchester United joined Tottenham and Liverpool in the next stage of the competition Kevin yeah again he said it was it was a, a, a good performance from United tonight I think they started in the correct manner the goal from Michelin obviously could have put a real spanner in the works and dented Louis van Gaal's future Manchester United uh, career as manager here but uh, again the way that they, they continued to attack get forward Memphis was, was so good for United tonight but we've got to give a, a good mention to Marcus Rashford two goals on his debut credit him for his goals but I think United more than deserved this victory tonight I think it was comfortable throughout and Mixon just didn't have enough to compete with United 5-1 on the night Manchester United go through 6-3 on aggregate and you know that the back pages are going to be full of the picture of Marcus Rashford tomorrow, guys. And to give him credit, he reminded some of those more experienced players how to find the net, didn't he? Because at that stage, you thought, well, it's, it was in the balance until he scored his first goal. Yes, it was. Uh, you know, when, certainly when you go a goal down as well with the youngsters that we spoke um, so open about before the game, it, it can get to you as well. You can feel that tension. He got it. He got the goal. And, you know, I think the first goal obviously came from the own goal. But the, the, the goal that he did score to get United in front, I mean, he took it so well. The second goal got himself into a, a poaching position. It was an excellent finish from him. And I think he can take a lot of credit tonight, the way that he's played. I, mean, I said to Ian during commentary there as well, Ellie, I think the basic things that he did were, 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 were very, very good tonight. One and two touches. He wasn't trying to be too elaborate. He wasn't trying to be over-expansive when he was in, uh, in possession. And I think Louis van Gaal probably points to that at, uh, after the match. I think he'll say about a positive performance from his youngster. And, of course, the two goals always help that. They will face much sterner tests, though, as this, yes. this competition develops. I mean, Michelin's second half were hardly in it, were they? No, they weren't. They, 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 I mean, to be honest with you, through the first half, they were camped in their own 18-yard box at times. Maybe I thought it was actually poor defending from them at times. I think they were getting into, um, they were getting themselves into trouble. They were dwelling on the ball defensively. United were catching them out. We felt as well, we said at the start of the second half, that we felt that another goal was certainly going to come from United's point of view. But they never really offered enough, I don't think, going forward. And United took advantage of that. Lots of reaction to come from Old Trafford. Let's...